we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. How are we doing, everybody? This is keeping them liable. I am doing a First Amendment audit slash a HIPAA audit. I'm on this little plaza and I'm going to record and see how they feel about it. It is June 30th and it's 4 p.m. almost 4 p.m. and this is the this is the place the lady already noticed me it's a clinic urgent care so they have um, they have a COVID-19 testing site here. But clinics like this is supposed to have their windows covered. That woman in that truck just asked me why are you filming it, but I just ignored her. I mean, it looks like she's talking to someone on the phone. The state troopers are right across the street, but I don't know if this is uh, this is their jurisdiction. The ambulance just showed up to this clinic. When this um, ambulance pulled up, I initially thought they brought somebody here to this clinic, but that wasn't the case. There were three gentlemen, young dudes, early 20s, that came out of the vet and they walked right by me. I usually say hello to people if we, you know, make eye contact, but they walked right by me. They they tended not to even see me and they didn't even make any contact with me so I didn't make any contact with them because I didn't want them to think that I'm trying to start instigating them or anything like that so if you pretend that you don't see me I'm gonna pretend that I don't see you either you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm just doing my thing they were coming to Subway to get a sub and get lunch yes, the other one just speaked and he was okay too. They didn't say a word to me, I didn't say a word to them. They got their food and they were on their way. And there is not a problem. But some people see you with a camera and then they want to make it their business. And that's when you put them in their place. She asked me, why am I recording? I ignored her. And she didn't say excuse me or anything like that. 
if I just pretended not to even hear her. So the ladies that's inside, they seem to be curious too. But I've been here for about 15 minutes now. And it didn't come out yet. So it's a waiting game. Oh. Here we go. Um, just the building. Okay. Because we don't want to be filmed. Oh, okay. 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 The art of being calm is very hard. And I usually respond to people based on their reaction. So she comes out and she says that we don't want to be filmed. So I said, okay. So she didn't order me to stop. She didn't ask me to stop. She made a statement. We don't want to be filmed. Okay. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop. I'm just going to say, okay. And let her do what she has to do. I'm just recording from outside. And I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything illegal. And let's see what how it goes. So, if you don't stop, I'm going to call the boys in blue. And they'll come and get you. Let's see how that goes. Again, these guys went and got their foods, walked right back. They don't say a word to me. I don't say a word to them. They got about five seconds of camera time. And they go about their business. I go about mine. But if they would have engaged me, they would have got more camera time. See you later. So these videos are usually really long. I have to keep breaking them down and speaking, narrating, uh, in order to explain what's going on. So the cop says here, so the first thing the cop says is what are you doing? And this, I can't stand that. Here we go. What are you doing? You video taping someone or what? Hello? So as soon as he steps out, he says, what are you doing? I turn around, and what do I see? He's parked at a handicap, no lights on, in the middle of the street. And he comes out all tough, like a tough guy. So I ignore the shit out of him. I just ignore him, look at him dead in the eyes, and don't say a word. I don't say a word. And I'm just looking like I'm shocked. I'm just surprised. And he's looking at me like, why are you looking at me like that? And I'm looking at you like that because you're parked in the middle of the street. And you're parked at a handicap. There's a spot in between the two handicap spots. The, the park was completely empty. There is no reason for you to park in the middle of the street and there's no emergency here. So I'm just going to keep ignoring him and just keep pointing at the handicap sign. I'm not going to say a word until his buddy comes because this dude is just an idiot. So as you saw, this guy came and such a hot style. Look how he's parked. Oh, and he's got the same blue line. Unit 345. I can only tell this guy came on. Are you all set or what? Buddy, I'm asking you a question. What? Do you speak or what? What? Yeah. We're here on a call. We're here on a call. We're here on a call. Do you have business here or no? Never mind that. Do you have business here? Do 
you have business here. Okay, let's go. Let's move along. You see this tyrant? He sees me walking backwards and then he starts telling me move along. At this point I'm really pissed off because I realized that he's not only blocking one handicap spot but he's blocking both handicap spots. And I'm just looking at him and giving him a, a look that he's just so confused. And I'm not saying nothing and that's making him more aggravated. And I'm intentionally doing that just to get him pissed off because he got me pissed off. At the fact that he thinks that he can just park and block two handicap spots. Not cool. I intentionally came around and went back to exactly where I was originally when this girl in the black pickup truck and her boyfriend were so curious to see what would happen if the cops show up. So I intentionally came right next to them and at this point they're just watching me and they're just freaking out like what the hell's going on and like, why is this happening. But they weren't rude or anything, they were they seemed to be okay. They just they were just curious to see why I was recording. So I I'm challenging them in front of him I'm challenging him in front of them actually Something. We can't have a conversation if we can't talk. Well, can you park legally and then I'll speak to you? Don't worry about how I'm parked. Then don't yeah, worry about me then. I wouldn't be parked there if you, if you were ahead. Alright then, you can leave, you know. What's the reason for taping inside this? this inside? Store? Inside. What's the reason for videotaping? Inside? Yeah. Did I go inside? No, but what's the reason for taping inside? Can you put your mask up? Because you came too close. What's the reason for videotaping inside? I'm doing a. Uh, documentary okay do you have any business inside there i just showed you my business see what i just showed you what my business was I was What's doing your business i don't know what your business documentary. is documentary move back or you don't get too close no you're approaching me you're approaching facility. say it again you can you can film in public that's not a public facility you understand uh, that right right uh, this is a public accessible yeah. right. so you're not going inside you're saying yeah you don't plan on going inside no plan and you're not filming inside correct no i am you're filming inside yes okay you can't go inside you can't tell me what to do if I didn't already do it. Well, I already know that. You can't legally, illegally park if you don't have, if there's no emergency. I wouldn't be parked. If you weren't here, I wouldn't be parked there. All right, what's your name, Vaginal? Officer Conway, 265. What's your name, Vaginal? From Montalbano, 189. Say it again, I couldn't hear you. Montalbano, 189. Say it again. Is this filming? Nothing in particular. It's gonna be a boring documentary. Make sure they're all set. You made it better. It was boring. You're you're a lot better than this guy. Is he young? Make sure everybody's comfortable. We get called. 
I had to pause it right when I said young because I made a huge mistake. I offended a lion because um, what I said was a young cub, but what I meant to say is a young pig. Um, I don't even know what's a baby pig called. Um, I should have looked it up. But anyways, I just had to pause it to correct myself. What I meant to say is a young pig. Because he was acting like, acting like a tyrant. And I was offending the lions and I apologize. Okay, here we go. Because people felt uncomfortable, that's all. Alright. You can understand that. I can, but I can't understand when he comes out a little too, too, too much okay. on the steroids. Alright. He needs to take it a bit, a, a notch, take it a bit. Don't worry. Look at this. Look at this. I understand. That. You, you did a, you did a lot better. Because we got a call for service. No, I understand, I'm, 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 but there I'm is no, no emergency though. We don't know what the, uh, we, we don't know that until we get here. Now. See, I thought he was okay. This dude, old G. Again, no stripes, but that tells you something. I'm having a conversation with him, I'm respecting him because he came out and he was cool and he was trying to de-escalate the situation. He knew that I was a First Amendment auditor and he was trying to explain it to the other guy. Um, but here's what I don't like. When I confront him about his partner taking two handicapped spots, um, he says, we have a call for service. Okay, and then I said, well, there is no emergency here. His response was, we don't know that. See, I have a problem with that. That's total BS. You see, when you call the cops, they ask you so many questions in order to get details of the call to provide to the cop. That way he knows what he's dealing with. Because if there's a robbery in progress, or there's shots fired, or there's domestic violence, or anything that's in that nature, they come flying. But when they say there is a dude that's practicing his First Amendment, and he's, you know, recording on a public sidewalk, they know what's up. And just like officer safety, we have a First Amendment order of safety also. Because just like they say, oh, we don't know what we're going to be dealing with until we get until we get there. Same thing for us. It's nerve-wracking because you don't know who you're getting. You might get somebody who's trying to escalate the situation. You might get somebody whose f fingers is, is itching them to shoot. So it's like you you see the cop and you have to show him that, that you're not scared of him. You have to show him that you have no fear and you're not scared of him. And once they see that, you look at them right in their eye and you show them that you have no fear and you're not scared of them and you know what you're doing and you're going to do it and you step up to them, then they get nervous because they're not used to that kind of interaction with the public because the public is scared from these thugs. And they only scared because they see what's going on every other day. Three days, three people get killed by cops every single day of the year. 365 and that that's that gives you the chills when you hear that but hey I'm still out here doing it and I'm stepping into them and I'm gonna put them in check every time they step up to me but after he realized that it's, there's no right. emergency he should move the car I understand yeah he'll be moving so he's gonna make sure they're all set we're taking off anyway right. you come around here or when they start fishing and asking questions like you're from around here, all you gotta do is ignore them. Just pretend they're not even there or you didn't hear what they said because it's nonsense. You have no business knowing where I'm from. Thank you for being professional. This guy, you gotta train him a little bit better. You do okay. whatever you want. You film outside, just don't go inside. Okay. You know what you're saying right now? Gibberish. You say that if you find me inside. Yeah. You don't tell me to do something that you didn't see me do. All right. You park legally next time you come here. I'll, I'll think about it. You're an idiot. I'll think about it. You're an idiot. Take care. Leave. 
Get out of here. Go find something better to do. Nick Sound Park. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Put your ego aside next time. Go find something better to do. Stop coming here to bother me. Learn from him. Easy on the juice. Leave your ego in the car next time. Notice how neither one of them had their lights on? Because there is no emergency. They know what's going on. That's why they don't have their lights on. So they should park legally. Very simple. All right, now that they came and they left, I'll tell you what happened. You're gonna be on camera. You cool with that? I can put it aside if you don't want me to. All right, all right. We're losing our rights, right? Yeah. Every single day, every day we're losing our rights. We consider ourselves as First Amendment honorers. We go out and we film in public and we like to see the reaction of the cops. When they come, they flex their muscles like that guy just did. You put them in check and you send them on his way. Simple as that. Oh, sorry, sorry. My bad. I got carried away. But that's all it is. Like, I'm not trying to get it. Well, what happens is the whole COVID-19 thing, they're supposed to be testing people. Yeah. And they have what's called the HIPAA law. And they're quick to call police and say, oh, they violent people are violating the HIPAA law. But the HIPAA laws up on them. They're supposed to have glass like that and cover so you don't see through. Yeah. But they violate the HIPAA law, but then they want to violate my rights and tell me that I can't film in public, which I have every right to film in public. Yeah. It's just as simple as that. Literally, now that they're gone, I'm going to end it. Literally, I'm going to end it now. It's over. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. They were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.